And delicious Wrigley Spearmint Gum is so handy. Just slip a package into your purse or pocket and you've got refreshment right at your fingertips. Chew Wrigley Spearmint while you're working. Enjoy this refreshing treat along with your favorite summer sports. Wrigley Spearmint Gum is always enjoyable. And you can chew it without even taking time out. Get a few packages of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, Columbia All Risk Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Shane bombing matter. Expense account item one, $14.75. Train fare and incidentals between Hartford and New York City. After I received from you the necessary information concerning the late David Shane. I arrived in New York at 3.30 in the afternoon and went directly to the 3rd Precinct Station where I contacted Lieutenant Will Stevens of Homicide. Just sit down, Johnny. Oh, thanks, Will. It's been a long time. Yeah, it has. Will, I'm investigating the David Shane killing. Well, I'll give you all the help I can. Well, I'd appreciate it. I understand you're holding the brother. Yeah. We talked to Mrs. Shane. She told us Charles sent the box. Says she heard David say so before he opened it. Brothers weren't living together? No, Charles Shane's been in California. He arrived here by plane this morning. We picked him up. What does he say about it? He swears he didn't do it. What do you think? Well, I don't know. As near as we can find out, the brothers were very close. Oh, so are Cain and Abel. Yeah. But there doesn't seem to be any motive in this case. At least we can't find any. I thought for a while Charles was going to give us a lead, but just before we had him brought up for questioning, his lawyer showed up. With a writ? No. No, just said he was representing Charles and wanted to talk to him. He was with him for about a half hour, and after he left, Charles wouldn't open his mouth. My report on David Shane says he worked at uh, Bishop and Harding. That's right. Factory foreman. I knew him. He's a nice guy. Took a lot of interest in union affairs, and everybody seemed to like him. And you can't find any motive for the brother to send him a bomb? Not yet. Can I talk to Charles? Sure. But you're not going to get anything out of him. Stevens put in a call and made arrangements for me to interview Charles Shane. Expense account item two. A dollar and 35 cents. Cab fare to the city jail, where I was taken in to see Charles Shane in his cell. Mr. Shane? Yeah? You mind if I sit down? No. Thanks. My name is Dollar. I represent the Columbia All Risk Insurance Company. Are you kidding? I'm investigating your brother's death. Oh. Your mother and sister are also insured with Columbia. How are they? Well, I haven't seen them, but the last report was they were doing all right. Mr. Shane. I didn't send him that bomb. Any idea who did? No. You're in a pretty tough spot. Okay. The package the bomb was in... Came from California, okay. How long have you been in California, Mr. Shane? About eight months. Doing what? Working. Doing what? Shipyard. Now, look, Mr. Dollar, the police have asked me all kinds of questions. Same ones you're asking me. I've given them the same answers. They've probably got them all written down on a piece of paper. So why don't you save yourself a lot of trouble and just go take a look at the paper? Just a couple more questions. Okay. You've got a cigarette. Oh, sure. If you had a job in California, why did you come back to New York? Because I quit my job. Why? Because I didn't like it. Now, you've had your couple of questions, Mr. Dollar. Okay. You didn't send the bomb? No, I didn't send the bomb. Now, would you lay off, please? Okay. Guard! I'm going to see your mother and sister. Any message? No. I can't help wondering... What? How your brother knew the package was from you. Goodbye, Mr. Dollar. Kind of foolish for a guy to send someone a bomb in a package that could be so easily identified. I said goodbye, Mr. Dollar, and thanks for the cigarette. 
Sure. Expense account item three, a dollar and sixty-five cents. Cab fare to the hospital, where I was allowed to interview Mrs. Shane. She was in her late fifties, a small, frail woman, lying in the clean white hospital bed and looking up at me with hurt-filled eyes. You only have a few minutes. Okay. Mrs. Shane, this is Mr. Dollar. He'd like to speak to you. Hello, Mrs. Shane. Are you another policeman? No, ma'am. I'm an insurance investigator. Oh. I was hoping you could tell me something about my son, Charles. I just left Charles, Mrs. Shane. Did you? How is he? Oh, he's fine. I made such a terrible mistake. How's that? Telling the police Charles sent the package. You don't think he did? Of course he didn't. Mr. Dollar, I, I don't know you, but... Please, if you're investigating this terrible thing, please, please do something for Charles. He didn't do it. He, he loved his brother. They were so close. He wouldn't ever do anything as terrible as this. I'll do everything I can, Mrs. Shane. David could have been wrong. He must have been. Wrong about what? About Charles sending the package. Why did he think Charles sent him the package? We were in the kitchen. I, I was fixing dinner. This package had arrived that afternoon at the factory. It was just addressed to David. Was it addressed in Charles' handwriting? I don't know. But when David came home, he, he said it was from Charles. I, I didn't know what I was saying when I told that to the police. I was so stunned. Mr. Toller, he didn't send that package Please, Mr. Dollar, you must do something to help him. All right, Mrs. Shane. I'm sure Mr. Dollar will do everything he can. Now, you'll have to rest. You will help, won't you, Mr. Dollar? I'll do everything I can, Mrs. Shane. Your time's up, Mr. Dollar. Sure. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Shane. Oh, all right. I... Goodbye, Mr. Dollar. Please help him. Goodbye, Mrs. Shane. she going to be all right? Oh, she'll be fine. She wasn't hurt badly. Minor cuts and burns, shock. Where's her daughter, Miss Mary Shane? Three doors down, but she's a little worse off. Can I see her? Yes. Lieutenant Stevens asked the doctor to give you all the cooperation possible. But you can only stay a few minutes, and she's under sedation. She may not be able to say much. Sure. Only a few minutes. Miss Shane. Hmm. Miss Shane, this is Mr. Dollar. He'd like to speak with you. Who? Johnny Dollar, Miss Shane. I'm investigating your brother's death. Oh. Yes, Mr. Dollar. I'm a little sleepy. They gave me something to make me sleep, and things don't make much sense. I'm sorry. I just saw your brother Charles. He didn't do it. He wouldn't have any reason to. Well, can you tell me anything that might help? He was helping David. He wouldn't try to kill him. He was helping him. Helping him? What? You said he was helping David. Oh, yes. Charles knows who sent the bomb, but he didn't send it. He knows who sent it? He knows. David's been making speeches against the Workers' Protective Association. The Workers' Protective Association? Miss Shane. Hmm? You said something about the Workers' Protective Association. Oh, been making speeches against them. Charles has been helping in California. Didn't send it. He knows who did. What has Charles been doing in California, Miss Shane? Charles knows who sent the bomb. He knows. He's keeping quiet to protect us, but he knows. Miss Shane, 
Did David tell anyone Charles was helping him in California? Tell anyone? There was a man named Wagner who called all the time. Wagner? Yes, mm mm-hmm. Wagner. Called all the time. Did he work at the factory? Hmm. No, I... I think he was a lawyer. A lawyer? Yes. Please, Mr. Dollar. Just one more question, nurse. It's very important. Miss Shane, did David tell anyone at the factory that Charles was working with him in California? Uh, at the factory? Yes. Did he tell anyone about Charles in California? Uh, yes. Yes, I think so. Mr. Dollar, I'll have to call the doctor. Look, this may mean a man's life. Who did David tell, Miss Shane? Man, I mean, oh, wish I could get things straight. Who did he tell at the factory? Prior. Sometimes after work, Mom used to fix dinner for him and David. Prior? Yes. Prior. Ralph Prior was a close friend of David's. David. Now, please, Mr. Dollar. Okay. I left the hospital and walked out in the street. One of those sidewalk photographers snapped my picture and handed me a card in case I wanted to send him two bits for the print. I threw the card away and hailed another cab. Expense account item four, $2.65. Cab fare to the Bishop and Harding factory where David had worked. I identified myself to the superintendent. He took me down and introduced me to the new foreman of the shop who pointed out Ralph Pryor at a turret lane. Mr. Pryor. Mr. Pryor. Yeah. My name is Johnny Dollar. Okay. So what? Oh, you're a friendly little fella, aren't you? Look, what do you want? I got a lot of work to turn out, and I ain't got no time for stupid conversation. I understand David Shane was a good friend of yours. Yeah. What do you want to know, Kurt? I'm investigating his death. All right, he was a good friend. Now, what else do you want to know? How long have you worked here? Oh, about six years. When was the last time you saw David? Yesterday. I said goodbye to him when he left work. You don't seem very unhappy. You got any more questions? Yeah. How does the mail come in here? From the mail room. Who brings it in? Nobody special. Foreman usually sends someone after. How do I find the mail room? Up the hall at the head of the stairs. Thanks. I went up and talked to the mailroom clerk, and he was a little more help. There had been a package for David. He remembered it because it was so heavy. He told me that he'd sent it down, along with some other mail, but he couldn't remember who'd picked it up. I was starting to get a hunch, so I got to a phone and put in a call to Lieutenant Stevens. How you doing? Pretty fair. You know, I don't think the brother sent the bomb. I don't either. The lab says the bomb was dynamite, highest grade. I don't see how it could have come through the mails all the way from California without the caps blowing the whole thing up. Huh. Do me a favor. Well, if I can. Pick up a Ralph Pryor. Works at the factory. Any charge? Just pick him up for questioning. He was supposed to be one of David Shane's closest friends. Pick him up and hold him as long as you can. You, uh, got something? Maybe. Friends, you know Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is a delicious treat that millions enjoy all year round. It's good to chew almost any time and any place. In warm weather, you'll enjoy especially the refreshment that Wrigley's Spearmint Gum gives you. When your mouth feels hot and dry, or when you're feeling warm and tired, 
Chewing Wrigley's Spearmint gives you a pleasant little lift. It cools your mouth, moistens your throat, and refreshes your taste. Besides, chewing on a good smooth piece of Wrigley's Spearmint gum seems to add enjoyment to whatever else you're doing. So enjoy it at home, at work, wherever you are. And remember, Wrigley's Spearmint gum is a swell treat to take along on picnics. Get plenty for everybody. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. And now, with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. After calling Lieutenant Stevens, I left the factory and hung around outside for about 15 minutes till I spotted a squad car pull up and two of New York's finest go into the building to pick up Ralph Fryer. Expense account item five, $2.75. Cab fare from the Bishop and Harding factory to the 3rd Precinct Police Station. The uh, boys just brought Fryer in. I got him downstairs. Would you mind letting me in on this? Well, it's a long shot. I found out what Charles Shane was doing in California. Well, we know that. He worked in the shipyard. Yeah, but he was also doing some undercover work. Undercover work? His sister told me he was helping David get some evidence on something called the Workers' Protective Association. Know anything about it? Yeah, had a lot of trouble with them. King-size extortion. They muscle in on the local union and guarantee the workers' protection. Protection from what? They're from nothing. But if they don't pay up, they get their heads split. We've even had a couple of killings, but we've never been able to pin them on anyone. The FBI's been working on it for over a year. They're operating all over the country. I'll bet my expense account that they sent the bomb. Well, you think Pryor's mixed up in it? Well, the sister told me Pryor knew what Charles was doing in California. David told him. So you don't think Pryor's going to admit anything, do you? I doubt it. But I'm interested in seeing who comes to bail him out. The sister also told me David got a number of calls from a lawyer named Wagner. Well, the lawyer who came to see Charles this morning was named Wagner. Uh, yeah, here it is. John Wagner. Yeah, that was the hunch. Now, this is the way it figures to me. Charles was in California working with David here to get evidence on a racket. You told me he shut up like a clam when this lawyer got through with him. Yeah, that's right. Acted frightened. And why not? If Wagner's mixed up in the racket, he simply tells Charles if he opens his mouth, the Shane family will get another bomb or get in the way of a truck or something. Oh, you've got to have more than that. Look, I admit it. I'm only guessing. Now... Pryor knew what Charles was doing in California. If he's in the association, he tells them, and they get set to kill off David and at the same time frame the brother for the killing. Mm, okay. Now suppose you tell me how they do it. Well, I'm just guessing again, but I think the bomb was sent from the factory. And in order to get hold of that package, the man who planted the bomb would have to be working in David's shop. Is that where Pryor works? He sure does. Uh, excuse me. Stevens. Yeah? He is? Okay. Well? What? The lawyer. Wagner? Yeah. He's out front. Wants to see his client, Ralph Pryor. I left Stevens and went out front where I spotted the lawyer, Wagner. He was small, dressed neatly in a Homburg, blue suit, and spats. I made sure he was the man I wanted, and I went out front to wait. About a half an hour later, he finally came out and grabbed a cab. Expense account item six, $3.25. One more cab to Tail Wagner. He led me to a waterfront dive on Canal Street. I watched him go in, then I followed. Something for you, Mac? No, just looking. Anything special? A man just came in here. He did? Short, blue suit and spats. Spats? And a Homburg. Better have a good stiff one. You didn't see him? Oh, sure. The short, blue suit, spats, Homburg. Yeah. Leading an elephant. You know something? I'm not amused. You know something? Neither was the elephant. Where does that back door lead to? Yeah, the back door... Take a walk back there, Mr. Dollar. You know who I am? Sure. 
You want to see Mr. Wagner, don't you? Isn't that right? That's right. Through that back door, he's expecting you. If you don't mind, I'll make a call first. Ah, but I do mind. I'm sorry. Well, I hate to disappoint you, but I'm going to make it anyway. No. You're going back to see Mr. Wagner. You know why? Because you got a gun in that pocket? That's a pretty good reason, Dollar. Yes, it is. Well, let's go see Mr. Wagner. The man with a gun in his coat pocket showed me the way to the back door. We went through into a hall that led to some stairs that led to another door. Behind the second door was an office. And behind the desk was the lawyer, John Wagner. Come in, Mr. Dollar. Come in. Have a chair. No, thanks. Didn't you hear what he said? Sit down. Now, uh, Mr. Dollar, you realize, of course, that you're in pretty serious trouble. Is that right? Oh, yes, indeed. How do you know who I am? From your photograph. You had to be a policeman, a private detective, some sort of an investigator. Turned out you're a freelance insurance investigator working for Columbia or Risk. You learned that from my photograph? We have a very efficient organization. When we heard you had visited the Shanes in the hospital, we had your picture taken. The sidewalk photographer. You have a good memory. We uh, turned the photo over to the qualified members of the organization, and they in turn gave us a very thorough report. And now what? It's obvious, isn't it? Al here will take you out to the car and drive you five or ten miles down the river. You mind clearing up a few points first? If they're not too time-consuming, I have an appointment. Pryor put the bomb in the package? Yes. He knew the package was coming and intercepted it before David got it, removed the contents, loaded in the bomb, and gave it to Dave. Absolutely correct, Mr. Dollar. Weren't you worried he might open it in the factory? We knew he wouldn't open it until he got home. You see, he believed there was important information concerning my organization in the package. From his brother? Of course. Pryor notified us what his brother was doing, and our people in California, in turn, notified us when to expect the package. Simple? Charming. Nothing like a delightful explosion. I'm sorry the women were present. Oh, sure. You cried yourself to sleep. I'm afraid you have to be going, Mr. Dollar. Al. Come on, Mr. Dollar. I'm sorry we couldn't talk further, but if you understand. Oh, don't think anything of it. And I'm sure you won't. Out the way you came in. Wait a minute. Hold it. That's trouble, our friend. Probably just the police. They didn't know you were coming. You didn't call. If you got prior released and told them to meet you here, I'm afraid Lieutenant Stevens is right behind him. Get him out of here, fast. You heard him move. Al gave me a shove through the door. We turned and headed for the back. Just then, Lieutenant Stevens and two uniformed cops came in the hall with Ralph Pryor in front of them. Al took his gun out of my back and turned to face the trouble. Drop it! Look out! I tried to take it away from him. Jim, take Pryor out to the car. Where's Wagner? In here. The window. There he goes. Wagner, stop! No, don't shoot. I can catch him. I'd love it. Yeah, are you all right? Just skinned my knee. But Wagner's out cold. Oh, you idiot. Why? He might have had a gun. Huh? He could have turned around and blown your head off. Hey. I never thought of that. Well, just proves what I've always said. You gotta be crazy to be a hero. The whole thing tied together something like this. Wagner was the head of the Workers' Protective Association. Pryor was one of the boys. When David Shane told Pryor his brother was in California collecting evidence that would stop the organization, Pryor reported to Wagner, 
and Wagner ordered him to intercept the evidence Charles was sending from California and get rid of David. Wagner sprung prior, as we thought he would, and Stevens trailed him to Wagner just in time to save my hide. Expense account out of seven, $22. Dinner with Lieutenant Stevens in grateful appreciation. Item eight, $32.50 for a new pair of slacks and minor first aid for my skinned knee. Expense account items nine and ten, $42.80. Hotel bill, train fare, and incidentals back to Hartford the next day. Expense account total, $123.70. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, friends, wherever you are, whatever you do, enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. That lively, full-bodied Wrigley Spearmint flavor is really refreshing. It cools your mouth, moistens your throat, helps keep you feeling fresh and comfortable. The smooth, pleasant chewing helps keep you feeling relaxed, too. So you naturally feel better, work better, get more fun out of doing things. Remember, too, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a refreshing treat you can enjoy almost any time and any place. Just slip a stick into your mouth whenever you want it. Do as millions do. Keep Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy and enjoy it often, every day. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. <laughs> Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, brought to you by Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, stars John Lund in the title role and was written by Blake Edwards with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Junius Matthews, Frank Nelson, Clayton Post, Virginia Gregg, Mary Lansing, Sammy Hill, and Jim Nusser. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. <laughs> The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's story of Johnny Dollar and that you're enjoying delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum every day. This is Charles Lyon inviting you to join us again next week at the same time when from Hollywood, John Lund returns as yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>